Okay, welcome to segment two of chapter four, which is gross income. This is segment two, we are now going to discuss the different classifications of interest income. So interest income is classified into number one, exempt from income tax. Number two, subject to final withholding tax. And third, subject to normal tax. Okay, you will, uh, you already know that uh, if a taxpayer makes an investment or makes a depository substitute or a trust fund for more than five years and it conforms with the BSP prescribed form, then it is subject, it is not subject to income tax the interest they're from so meaning the interest they're from only is is uh, it is non-taxable okay so we'll now discuss further tax exempt interest income so these are those which are received from a duly registered cooperative by co-op members like for instance the cfi or the uh, court of first instance cooperative where several Cebuanos are members in the cooperatives and they are receiving interest either in the form of capital investment interest or savings account interest or time deposit interest. So whatever, whatever interest they receive from the cooperative is not subject to tax. It is tax exempt. Secondly, <clears throat> When the interest conforms with the BSP prescribed form and the maturity is five years or more. That's the example given uh, a while ago uh, in segment one. Third, in expanded foreign currency, if the deposit is an expanded foreign currency deposit system and the depositor is a non-resident citizen or a non-resident alien. Fourth, if a tenant got another so fourth when a non tenant who paid when a tenant paid the land owner on the price of the land under a tenant purchase agreement as part of the CARP, the comprehensive agrarian reform program. So a tenant is a farmer and he is tilting the land of the landowner. And they made an agreement under the tenant purchase agreement of the CARP. So in this case, the interest income of the landowner is non taxable. Okay, the second classification interest income are those which are subject to final withholding tax. So if this inter interest income are subject to final withholding tax, the taxpayer need not uh, declare them in the income tax because it has already been, uh, the tax there has already been paid with finality. That's why it's called final withholding tax. So example of this are interest on deposits made on banking institutions where there is a final withholding tax of 20%. If you notice, if you have a bank deposit in any uh, banks here in Cebu and there's an interest, you earn interest, there is also a corresponding withholding tax. And that withholding tax is remitted by the depository bank to the BIR. No? So therefore, your interest that you earned in your savings or time deposits is already subjected to income, I mean, final withholding tax there's no need for you to declare that in your income tax return now we have a sample illustration on april 30 2020 mr gigi placed his retirement pay of 1 million in the pnb that's a bank now as time deposit with an interest of 18 percent per annum so in the year 2020 question how much is gigi's interest income subjected to final withholding tax and how much is subjected to normal tax so in the year 2020 
So, the answer here is uh, the interest income subjected to final withholding tax is equivalent to 120,000 pesos. It's computed by multiplying 1 million, which is the retirement pay that he deposited, times the interest rate of 18%, and times the number of months, which is 8, and divided by the number of months in a year, 12. Why this is 8? Because it starts... Uh, the reckoning is April 30, which is already good as May 1. So if you count May up to December 31, 2020, it's equivalent to 8 months. No? So therefore, the interest income, which is subjected to final withholding tax, is 120,000. And the final withholding tax is 24,000. Which is 24, which is 20 percent of 120,000 pesos. Now the depository bank withholds the 20 percent final tax and remits it to the BIR. Meanwhile, GG is no longer subjected to normal tax from his interest income because it's already been paid you know, by the final withholding tax being remitted by the PNB. Okay, interest income which is subject to normal tax. These are those which are earned by lenders or lending institutions whose main business is lending money to clients since borrowers do not withhold tax upon paying the lender or the lending institutions since it is earned in the conduct of its normal business it is therefore included in the computation uh, in the in annual income tax return. Example, JJ Lending Corporation extended loans of 1 million pesos during the year 2019. And interest is at 18% per annum. So PA is per annum, meaning annually. So assuming JJ Lending's operation, operating expenses for the year is 80,000 pesos how much is the co corporation income tax for the year so this is the answer the interest income of JJ lending is 1 million times the 18 percent so that is equivalent to 180,000 pesos you minus or deduct the operating expenses to get the net income so minus 80,000 therefore the net income subject to normal tax is 100,000 pesos then multiply it by the corporate tax rate of 30 percent therefore income tax for 2019 is 30,000 pesos okay. this uh, corporate income tax rate of 30 percent is good until June 30, 2020 Effective July 1, 2020, the new corporate rate is 25%. This is uh, uh, <clears throat> promulgated or provided for in the second batch or the Trabajo Law of the Train Law, you know, the Trabajo Provisions, which is the second batch of the Train Law. Okay. So that ends interest income. We go to royalty income. Royalty income is a payment or portion of proceeds paid to the owner of a right. So such as an oral right or a patent for the use of it. Or a portion of proceeds from the work of an author or composer. So these are, um, these are intelligent uh, intelligent properties no? or intellectual properties so patent is the license or the registration for a an invention so if let's say for example you invented a microwave you invented the microwave oven so every brand and that uses your patent Let's say uh, Samsung, uh, what's 
uh, Black and Decker, every brand, no Sony or there's no Sony micro, uh, let's say um, uh, Whirlpool, no. So this this manufacturer of microwave will pay you royalty because they are using your patent. But uh, patent's life is only good for 20 years. So once after, so once the life of the patent expires, any machine which is using your patent is will no longer pay you royalty income. So work of an author or composer. So J.K. Rowling, who is the no, known author of the Harry Potter series. He, she is paid when filmmakers produces a movie based on her book. No? So the income that she earns is called royalty income. So royalty income is further classified as number one, those which are derived from natural resources or products such as coal, gas, oil, copper, silver, gold, and other mineral products, similar products. So this type of royalty income is subject to 20% final tax. This happens when the finder finds coal or gas or oil out there in the field. No? So whoever finds it and registers it is the owner of the royalty income who discovers the mine. No? And it's subjected to 20%. Secondly, those earned on books or intellectual properties the literary works and musical composition is subjected to 10 percent final tax so since it is subjected to final tax then therefore the earner or the taxpayer no longer is required to present it to his income tax return Another form of passive income is dividend income. We're still in passive income. So dividend income is a form of earnings derived from the distribution made by a corporation out of its earnings or profits and payable to stockholders, whether in money or property. So the one who earns dividend income are the stockholders, also known as shareholders, no? So there are rules to follow on dividend income to know whether they are subject to tax or not taxable. So first, if the dividend income is received by a domestic or resident corporation, which is declared from a by a domestic corporation subject to tax, then therefore such dividend is tax exempt so the declaring corporation is a domestic corporation which is subject to tax so there's already tax paid there and the one who received it is a domestic or resident corporation so there will be double taxation if another uh, tax is collected from this uh, corporation from the recipient corporation so this is known as the intercorporate principle. Secondly, pure stock dividends or dividends received from cooperative and pure liquidating dividends are tax exempt. So by the way, there are three different, uh, different scenarios here. So if the dividend is a pure stock dividend, say the company or corporation declared 20% stock dividend, so it is tax exempt or the de the declaring corporation is a cooperative then that dividend is tax exempt or it is a pure liquidating dividends it is tax exempt so what is a pure what is a liquidating dividend this is when the corporation is <clears throat> in the process of dissolution so the dividend being made are, are called uh, liquidating dividends. Thirdly, 
still exempt dividends. Cash or property dividend is subject to final tax. So if received by an individual or non-resident corporation from a domestic corporation subject to income tax, here are the rules. Letter A, if received by a not if a resident citizen or non-resident citizen and resident alien, the final tax is 10%. So there are there are three, no? Resident citizen, non-resident citizen, and non-resident alien. If the recipient is a non-resident alien, we are now in letter B. Non-resident alien engaged in trade or business in the Philippines. So ETB is engaged in trade or business. It is subject to final tax of 20%. So you should know the rates because they're different. No? But if the recipient is a non-resident alien, not engaged in trade or business in the Philippines, then the final tax is the same, 20%. So, if regardless whether he's engaged in trade or business or not engaged, no? non-resident aliens. Fourth, if the recipient is a non-resident foreign corporation, the final withhold tax is 15%. So there are different rates, 10, 20, 20, and 15. So just remember, remember 10, 20, 20, and 15. 15 is the, we're talking about non-resident foreign corporations. So fourth rule on dividend income, other dividends excluded from the above rule are included in the computation of taxable income and income tax at the end of the year. So those which are not found here are subject to income tax. So there are forms and valuation of dividend income. First, if it is cash dividend, then it is valued to the extent of the amount of the money received by the stockholder or shareholder. If the dividend is a property dividend, then the value of the income would be based on the fair market value of the property received at the time of the declaration. So if the value, for instance, is if the property, for instance, is a vehicle, like a uh, delivery vehicle, and it's valued at 500,000 pesos, then the fair market value, 500,000 pesos, will be the one declared as income. Now third, if it is a stock dividend, if pure, pure stock dividend, then it, it is not subject to tax. It is a mere transfer of retained earnings to paid in capital account. So retained earnings is transferred to paid in capital account. So there's no, there's no division there. When is it taxable? We're talking about stock dividend. So when is stock dividend taxable? Number one, there is an option that some stockholders could take cash or property instead of stock dividends. So it will become taxable. Second, when some stockholders exercise the option to take the cash or property dividends. So naturally it becomes taxable even though uh, the shareholder opted to receive stock dividend third the exercise of option resulted in the change of the stockholders proportionate share in the outstanding shares of the corporation let's say when the other when he will exercise and he is the only the shareholder it's the only one exercise the option taking cash or property the rest would are taking stock dividends then his uh, shares would be uh, diluted meaning it will go down because he's taking is maintaining his stocks while the others are augmenting their stocks by way of stock dividend so those stock dividends are therefore subject to tax
and also if there is a redemption of stock dividend meaning the stock dividend is redeemed so this happens when the corporation cancels or redeems stocks issued as dividends so this happens uh, this occur let's say uh, a corporation declares stock dividend let's say every stock will earn 10% stock dividend but then cancels it no? so when that happens uh, this is what will happen no? or redeems it what is redeemed uh, repurchase it no so the redemption when it buys back the stock dividend it is down to amount of making a distribution of a taxable dividend so the amount of redemption or the cancellation of the stock is the taxable income of the shareholder next stock dividends which are different from shares previously acquired is not taxable so there is a shareholder he, he owns common shares then a stock dividend is about preferred shares a different kind of share so therefore it is not taxable so we have an example here lean acquired 1,000 common shares of AB Corporation for 100,000 pesos. Subsequently, he received 20% stock dividends in the form of preferred shares. So what he purchased was common shares, were common shares, and then the stock dividend were preferred shares. So it's different from his stocks. You know? So the market values of the stocks are 60 pesos for common and 100 pesos for preferred. Is this taxable? The answer is no. No. But after the stock dividend declaration, Lin's new cost of common shares and preferred shares are distributed as follows. No. So the common stocks, 1,000 pesos, which is now... Um, which is now valued at 60 pesos per share. So that would be the fair market value. 1,000 times 60 becomes 60,000. And then the preferred stocks, which received by a dividends declaration. So it is 200 shares because it is 20% of the stock dividends. So 20% of 1,000 is 200 pesos, uh, 200 shares times the value of the preferred share which is 100 per share so times 100 pesos so preferred stocks receive is equivalent to 20,000 pesos so if you notice the fair market value of Lin's capital stock is now 80,000 pesos instead of 100,000 pesos no? so actually he lost here 20,000 no, because now it's 80,000 and he acquired it for 100,000. So we will get now the fraction. So we have to make his uh, stocks go back to 100,000 because this is lower than 100,000. So we will put back uh, his uh, cost, no, at cost. So we will take the fraction or the ratio here. So 6 plus 2 equals 8. So 6 common stocks is 6, 8. While the preferred shares is 2, 8 or 1 fourth. And this is 3 fourths. No? So 3 fourth, if you divide uh, 60,000 divided by 3 fourth is equivalent to 75,000. And 20,000 divided by 1 fourth is 25,000 pesos. So, 75 plus 25 equals 100,000 pesos. That's the new allocated cost of the shares owned now by Mr. Lee. But if the stockholder maintains more than one class of stocks, what will happen? So, in the note here, if the stockholder maintains more than one class of stocks, so meaning if Lee originally has common shares and he has also preferred shares then AB Corporation makes a declaration of 20% uh, 
stock dividends in in the form of preferred share then that uh, stock dividend is will now become taxable no the above example is taxable so it will be taxable because he has two different shares it says it says here in the note if the stockholder maintains more than one class of stocks okay let's go to script dividend script dividend happens when the corporation the declaring corporation issues dividends in the form of promissory note and is taxable to the extent of its fair market value so it is taxable in the year when the warrant was issued so the promissory note is a warrant no? like a warranty and if the promissory note is interest bearing bearing then the interest is deemed a taxable interest income on the year the promissory note is paid so first it is recorded the script dividend is recorded as a taxable uh, income in the in the year it was issued no? and the interest will be declared as interest income in the taxable year when it the prime promissory note is paid so very easy you just understand the the statements indirect dividend are there uh, such thing yes this happens when other dividends representing benefits payments or rights received by the taxpayer which are really dividends so there's they are not in a form of dividends but they are benefits received payments received or rights received no example here al a stockholder of Jollibee so he's a stockholder and he, he is indebted to Jollibee for 30,000 pesos he's a stockholder and he is indebted to Jollibee at the end of the year Jollibee now cancelled Al's indebtedness so the cancellation of the indebtedness or the cancellation of the debt by Jollibee has an effect of paying dividend to a stockholder who is Al no so the effect of the cancellation of the debt by Jollibee is paying dividend to Al the shareholder it is a form of indirect dividend another dividend the liquidating dividend I already stated this a while ago it is a return of stockholders investment this happens during the distribution of assets by a corporation to its stockholders upon corporate dissolution so it's going to be dissolved it's going to end its corporate life so there are two ways that happens in this case the first way would be when there is excess amount of liquidating dividends over cost of shares surrendered then it is taxable so let's say you have uh, your your shares of stocks is worth 100,000 pesos and the liquidating dividend is equivalent or has a fair market value of 200,000 pesos so 200 minus 100,000 is equivalent to 100,000 liquidating dividend which is taxable second way would be when the stockholder sustains loss and it happens when the uh, value of the liquidating dividend is lesser than the cost of the shares which are surrendered by the shareholder to the corporation so again if the shareholder has 100 uh, thousand pesos worth of shares then in the during the dissolution he received a liquidating dividend equivalent to 60,000 pesos only so 100,000 pesos minus 60,000 pesos so lugi siya 
how much is the loss? It is 40,000 pesos. And since he, it is a loss, then it is a deductible loss, meaning it can be deducted from the gross income of the taxpayer. So an example, we have an example, C Corporation is dissolving to, so it issued a liquidating dividend of 12 pesos per share. Meanwhile, Bob has purchased 2,000 shares from C Corporation three years ago at 10 pesos per share. So how much is Bob's gain or loss? So the answer is 4,000 pesos capital gains. Why? Because the liquidating dividend is equivalent to 24,000 pesos here. Because it's now, he has 2,000 shares multiplied by the liquidating dividend of 12 pesos per share. 12 pesos per share. So that is 24,000. Then minus the cost uh, or the payment he made three years ago at 10 pesos per share. So 2,000 times 10 is equivalent to 20,000 pesos. Therefore, 24,000 minus 20,000, there's a gain in this example, and it is a capital gain. So the capital gain on liquidating dividends are treated as taxable income and not subjected to final withholding tax. So there's no final withholding tax, so therefore it is included in the taxable income and is subjected to normal income tax. All right, let's go to prices and winnings. So prices and winnings. So price is a reward in a contest or competition representing remuneration for an effort reflecting one's superiority like price money of a boxing contest so the prices if more than 10,000 pesos is subject to a final tax of 20 percent uh, so therefore the price money that you will receive if you won a boxing contest is already net of final withholding tax deducted at 20 percent but if it is 10,000 pesos or less then the price is subject to normal income tax because it is not subjected to final tax. You know? If it is 10,000 or less. So 10,000 above, subject to final withholding tax of 20%. Let's go to winnings. Winning is a reward for an event that depends on chance, such as gambling, lottery, bingo or lottery or like balik no or bingo so all winnings are subject to final tax regardless of the amount so if you win the lottery of the pcso jackpot price of 50 million it is now subject to tax final tax of 20 percent no? that's under the new law train law okay now let's go to partner share in the distributive profits from professional partnerships net income. So if the taxpayer is a professional and he's part of a GPP, which is the general professional partnership, for, for instance, he's a lawyer. So the they are lawyers. So there's plenty of them. Like let's say there, there are three of them. So if there is a profit then the partner's share is part of the gross income of the partners but not of the partnership because gpp is not subject to tax it only declares uh, tax to bir but is not paying it is not paying any income tax no it's just uh, showing that this is the profit of the GPP. So the, it, therefore, it is distributed to the partners. Then we go to other sources of income. It's our earnings, which are 
incidental or not common or meaning they are not in the usual a trade or business or not in the course of the business of the taxpayer first it's bad debt recovery second tax refund or tax credit then damages recovery annuities and income from whatever source so <clears throat> there is a general principle in taxation which is the tax benefit rule what is this rule this is well, when the taxpayer deducts an item fr from his income tax return and enjoyed a tax benefit meaning there's a reduction of his income tax liability so and in the subsequent year he recovers all or part of that item then he will recognize gross income in the year the deducted item is recovered so example if the taxpayer declares a bad debt so what is a bad debt it's an account receivable no with the account receivable according here the bad debt in order to be deductible must follow these requisites so these rules before making it as a deduction from gross income it must conform with these rules and what are these rules number one there must be a valid and existing debt arising from business or trade of the taxpayer number two that the debt must actually uh, it must be as actually ascertained to be worthless and uncollectible during the taxable year and number three the debt must be charged off or written off from the books during the taxable year so here probably the uh, tax I mean the person obligated to pay or indebted to pay uh, it's already worthless because he's already dead no and he has not uh, he has no properties left behind to the ears or it could be worthless because the business of the person obligated is already uh, closed no? so therefore the debt must be charged off or written from the books during the taxable year so let's say the bad debts is uh, 100,000 pesos then gross income minus 100,000 pesos will equal to your net income subject to tax no so there is now a deduction from the net income because of that bad debt, uh, bad debt declaration, it's deducted no? from your gross income, from the taxpayer's gross income. But then, what? Uh, suddenly, the person obligated showed up, and he uh, maybe he rose from his uh, debts. He recovered, no. Then he was able to pay the taxpayer so meaning the bad debt which has been deducted from the gross income was already recovered by the taxpayer because the person obligated paid him maybe he won the lottery you know so in this case there is a bad debt recovery so under the tax benefit rule since you have the taxpayer has benefited by deducting bad debt from his gross income because his income tax liability uh, was reduced so he therefore must declare it as an income on the year the bad debts were recovered and then we have tax refund or credit these are tax paid by the taxpayer which is allowed as a deduction from his gross income like percentage tax so if you pay if you do not pay VAT you pay with percentage tax you can deduct it from your gross income now if the percentage tax has been refunded by the BIR or has been uh, declared to be a tax credit then you have the taxpayer must must uh, 
declare it as part of his gross income on the year it was refunded or allowed as tax credit. <laughs> so this uh, tax refund or not tax credit is not applicable to estate or donor's tax, taxes, Philippine income tax, st stock transaction tax, VAT claimed as input tax. So damages recovery. <clears throat> These are amount received by an injured person as payment for loss of profit or loss of income or payment to compensate damage to property, injury, to person or loss of life. So in this case, uh, let's say there's uh, an accident and the taxpayer was injured. And in the process, he was not able to tend his business for two months. He has to close his shop. So the loss of profit, if there's a payment for loss of profit, then what will happen? Is it taxable or non-taxable? If there's payment for loss profit or loss income, the rule says it is taxable. No? But if the payment was made to compensate for the damage of property, or to compensate the injury of the person or loss of life, then that payment is non-taxable. So if the person, uh, let's say, was hospitalized, so the payment was for, in payment for the hospital bills and any modifications after this being discharged from the hospital, then that payment received is non-taxable okay now let's go to annuities annuities are installment payments received for life insurance sold by insurance companies so the annuity payments represent a part that is taxable and not taxable so what are taxable if the annuity payment represents interest so sometimes if you buy insurance, then you sustain the insurance, meaning you're still alive after so many years, after the life of the insurance, then there's a clause that if you are alive, then your premiums will earn interest. The payments that you have made to your insurance, it will earn interest. It will earn interest, so therefore that interest is taxable. Second, if it if you still if you are still alive and you're in the life of your insurance insurance policy and there's a rider in your insurance policy that in case you are still alive in the life of your insurance policy then the premium payments that you have made meaning the monthly payments or the annual payments you made to the insurance will be returned to you. So in that case, the return, it is called return of premium because the payment that you make to the insurance companies are called premium, no? Insurance premium. So therefore, it why it is not taxable? Why it is not taxable? Because it is a mere return of capital. So imora ng kwarta, giuli, no? So therefore, it is not taxable. So other sources of income from whatever source are gambling ransom money in kidnapping extortion of money smuggling embezzlement and income received by error so these are the different uh, income but you must declare them in your income tax no even though you uh, you receive the money as ransom money Ooh, you'll be known as the kidnapper or extortion of money you're asking money then smuggling so these are illegal sources no okay embezzlement should be double z all right 
that ends our discussion for chapter four any questions or clarifications just email me at mazarin and mazarin law at gmail.com or my facebook account attorney london mac for cost uh, for questions uh, okay and this ends chapter four taxation and i hope you are all well stay safe <clears throat> always study because knowledge is power